Hi everyone, welcome to another very special Impact interview with Sportskeeda Wrestling. I'm Gary Cassidy and today my guest is one of the brightest stars in what's a very, very stacked knockouts division in Impact. It's Kimber Lee. How's it going today, Kimber? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very good because it's a little bit later here than it is over there for you, so I'm not going to complain too much. So there's one place I need to start off before we get into some chat about yourself. Of course, you've only been in Impact Wrestling for, I believe it's just coming on three months now. Um, but I need to ask, you know, the company, man, talk about a company that takes their chance, that creates their own chance, first of all, and then takes the bull by the horns. Ever since Slammiversary, all eyes have been on Impact Wrestling. I know that you were only there for, you know, a couple of months up until that point, and then it's not been too long after. I need to ask, has there been a shift in the mentality in the locker room in that time? Or is it just a case of, right, we got to this point, let's make people realise why? Um, I mean, I can't... I've been there for, like you said, three months, so I don't know if I can speak on the overall shift over time. But um, in the three months that I've been a part of Impact Wrestling, everybody has seemed to just want to make it the best place possible for professional wrestling. Um... That leads me perfectly into what I was going to ask next. So, obviously, you know, we mentioned that you debuted. I believe it was in May. It has only been three months. But for me, I think we're seeing... I'm not sure if it is the Kimberly of old or if it is a completely new Kimberly we're seeing. Either way, it looks like you're, you know, in the shape of your life, on the form of your life. How do you feel personally? Um, I think it's the old me, but gone through my own set of uh, trials, tribulations, um, I've had some dark periods in my life that I've had to get through, and I've managed to get through them and overcome, and I think that defines you as a person, and it changes you as a wrestler, too, because that's part of me, and um, I feel like people were starting to forget who I was, and I'm not okay with that, and so I came in wanting to remind people just exactly who I am and why I call myself the craft jewel and why I deserve to be at the top of a women's division. That's one thing. It seems like... Um somewhat of a, and I know that this kind of leads to another thing, but it seems like somewhat of a regaining your identity, which I know is odd considering you weren't called Kimberly for a while and now you are again, so so maybe that's more literal than people would take it. But we need to go back to, you know, this past week on Impact, what you mentioned there about making people realise who you are again. Man, if there was ever a match to do that in, it's a match against the current champion, it's, it's a match against Diona Perrazzo. What was it like being in the ring with Diona, and what is it like just having someone like Diona Perazzo in Impact? Um, you know, it was awesome. I haven't Diona and I have only ever wrestled one time before this, and it has been a few years at this point. So I was incredibly excited to get to share the ring with her again, and on a much bigger platform this time. And you know, Diana is somebody who. She says it like it is. She is one of the greatest technical women's wrestlers out there. I don't know if I'd say she's the best, because I kind of think I'm pretty good, too, but hey. Um, but she's definitely somebody who is a force to be reckoned with, and I want to match myself with those people. And um, getting an opportunity to share the ring with her is a great one. And granted, it didn't go the way I would want it to, but... My crown jewel would probably show up with me if it was a title match. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, um, you know, and now that I've gotten to feel the waters and test her out a bit, I don't know if she would come out victorious the second time. Most definitely, and that's, I think, what made that match so great is, like you said, she said she's the best technical wrestler, but I mean, you definitely proved that there's it's not a it's not a unanimous decision by any means that she is. That was a brilliant match, and it's one that I think you know everyone's gonna absolutely love um, if they see that again. If they see it again at some point, so 
There's a little rumour today about um, something called Impact Wrestling Emergence, um, which the rumour is that it's going to be headlined by Diona and Jordan Grace. What's it like knowing that in Impact Wrestling, at any point, any time, anyone can be anywhere on the card? I mean, we've seen on one end of the scale Eddie Edwards defending the championship in the opening match. Obviously, the women can easily main event, and I don't even think just the women's title match could main event. What is it like knowing that that roster is so fluid that anyone can be anywhere on the card? Um, it's just an amazing feeling to know that I'm a part of something that is so um, wide open and that anyone can be anywhere. Um, and it's just an amazing feeling to know that there's so many women I think that's one thing that Impact do really well right now is value their talent. That's something that I definitely think is a complete highlight and probably one of the reasons everyone seems so happy. Um, but, the, you know, we mentioned that the women's division, I know that you're, um, you're someone who isn't completely restricting themselves to wrestling women. I need to ask, intergender wrestling, is that something you'd like to see more of in Impact? Particularly if you've been there three months and we've seen how stacked that division is. There's a lot of matches, Kimberly matches, that I still really want to see anyway. So I'm definitely excited for that. One thing that came up in a recent interview that I'd done, um, this was with Eddie Edwards. He was, um, he was speaking to, again, how stacked the knockout division is. And he said that he would quite like to see, he definitely wouldn't be against seeing knockout tag team titles return. Is that something that you'd be up for up for seeing back? And if so, have you got anyone that you'd maybe choose to be your partner if that was the case? Oh, absolutely. Um, if you followed my career at all, you know tag team wrestling is one of my favorite things to do. Yep. And um, to see that element come back into impact would be just fantastic and it'd be something I'd want to go for. And um, the one person I always have to think about when, <laughs> when it comes to a tag team is there's already the queen, I'm the princess. <laughs> Most definitely, and that is a, a very interesting tag team right there. Obviously, Madison Rain was someone that I kind of had in mind for that question, so I'm glad you mentioned her. Didn't throw me off there um, by any means. Madison Rain is someone who, again, we seem to be seeing a little bit more of her in the ring than we have in recent years of late. What do you think of Madison Rain? She hasn't lost a step at all, has she? She still looks great. No, absolutely not. She hasn't lost a step. She's uh, exactly where she used to be. Um, she's probably like even better than she's been. Um, and she's just like everybody there, a force to be reckoned with. And I, I know I would like to see more of her in the ring too. <laughs> Yeah, that was, um, I had two names written down, the top one was, was Madison Rain, and then the little one, in case you threw me a curveball that I need to ask about as well, is Taya Valkyrie. I thought she might have been a curveball you'd have thrown at me. What do you think of Taya Valkyrie? And you know, just the, even the case, if you look at Madison Rain, Taya Valkyrie, and then the, 
broad spectrum of women in the knockouts division. What's it like working with people like Taya and Madison Rain that are, you know, you're not, not a veteran by any means, but they are people who have been in Impact for a long time. What's it been like being under their kind of guidance and impact since joining? I mean, it's, it's awesome. Like, I can't say it enough how much all the women at Impact support each other. Like, yes, there's women that have been there longer, but they don't make you feel less significant because you haven't been there as long as them. They make you feel like you're a part of the team and they accept you in and... It's, it's just a great place to be a part of. It's all positive energy. I don't I don't feel like I'm walking on eggshells, and I felt that before. And it, it's not a good feeling. You feel like you've got to watch your back at all times. And at Impact, I feel like if we were to have a problem come up or something even personal, like they would be there for me, even, even though I've only been there for three months. And that's really cool. That speaks yet again to the full, you know, valuing everyone. That's yeah, definitely something that rings true there. Um, you know, I mentioned a couple of the veterans there. We've mentioned a lot of names. The one thing that I need to ask, you know, we mentioned how stacked the Impact Knockouts division in particular is. Who's someone that maybe people who have just started watching, say, at Slammiversary, have never watched Impact in their lives? Who is the one knockout that you think man, people need to be paying attention to her. And I'm going to guess you would say yourself, but maybe aside from yourself, who's the one person that people should definitely be paying attention to? Hmm. I think people need to keep an eye on Madison Rain. I think completely agree and because I eliminated you from saying your own name I'm going to definitely say Kimberly is in that conversation as well but I think people know more of you anyway especially after that Deonna match. I've got two final questions and um, one of them is kind of more looking into the past one's looking into the future. I need to ask we're going to compare two names here and I want you to tell me the difference between them. Let's mention the name Abby Leith and let's mention the name Kimberly What's the difference between Abby Leith and Kimberly? Well, I would say Abby was a girl who didn't really know who she was. Um, she's grasping at straws, trying to be something in a place where she didn't really get the opportunities that she needed to show herself fully. But then Kimberly is somebody who has been a persona that has been with me for a very long time. I have grown into that, and she had to kind of hide for a little while, but now she's coming back full force, and there's nothing to hide anymore, and I get to be me, and that's the difference. Most definitely, and that, again, leads perfectly into this next question. You kind of, you teased this earlier a little bit, saying that you were essentially with Impact for the long haul. Um, I need to ask, what are Kimberly's plans in Impact Wrestling going forward? What do you want to achieve in Impact Wrestling? I want to be the greatest, not just women's wrestler, the greatest wrestler that Impact Wrestling has ever seen. I absolutely love that answer. I don't think anyone could say that any better. Thank you so much for joining me, Kimber. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait to see what you do next in Impact Wrestling. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it.